Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're going to talk about 10 gigabit ethernet on the Mac. But in order to do that, we're going to need this. So we're going to talk about this. Stay tuned. All right, you guys, so this right here is the Thunderbolt 3 to 10 gigabit ethernet adapter from OWC. And OWC generally makes pretty good stuff. We've had most of the time good luck with their stuff. Most of their stuff generally turns out pretty well. So we, we this is one that we ordered a while ago, and we've had it for a while, and we've used it for a while, so we can pretty much give you a good review on it, I think. So anyways, the point is that um, we, we've been editing or making videos in 4K for a while, but we've really been lagging behind. Our workflow's really slowed down, mainly because when we started shooting 4K, we were still on one gigabit LAN and we're moving storage and files and movie files and stuff like that, right? It just took a really long time. So we needed to upgrade to 10 gigabit ethernet. And Cal did just another one of the adapters that we bought. We have some PCI embedded adapter and stuff, but on the MacBooks, we really needed something that was external that could plug into a Thunderbolt 3 port and give you 10 gigabit ethernet. And this is exactly what that does. So what it really does is it, you get a little adapter in the box, you plug it in with Thunderbolt 3 cable, and on the other side, you get an n base T RJ45 port, all right? So that's what happens. So go over some quick specs on this. Thunderbolt 3 bus power 10 gigabit ethernet adapter with n base T support. Yeah, if you're on a Mac, you don't need to install any drivers. If you have a Thunderbolt 3 capable Windows PC, you probably need to install drivers, but it looks like it will work there. It is silent, it is passively cooled. We'll talk about that in a bit. It comes with a one year OWC limited warranty, okay? If, in case you want to know what kind of controller is in there, it's a 10 gigabit Ethernet controller from Aquintia, okay? And it works with Windows 10 or later or Mac 10.13.6 or later, okay? It can deliver over blazing fast speeds of over 900 megabytes per second on real world transfers. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, it works with pretty much anything. It's AVB ready, it's cost effective. And like I said earlier, because it is N base T, it can do 10 gigabit, five gigabit, 2.5 gigabit, one gigabit, and also 100 megabit base T ethernet standards. All right, so um, let's talk about it. So in the box, you get this, okay? Um, this is a pretty solid build. I'm, I'm not sure if it's aluminum or whatnot, but it, it's a pretty solid build. It seems a little heavy to be aluminum. And it's, it's pretty much like an aluminum casing type deal. And it has a panel on the front and a panel on the back. Okay. And if you, this looks familiar at all, it's because I think there's another model, another brand or whatever you want to call it out there that looks exact same replica, except on this badge right here, it says Aquintia no, Akitio or something like that instead of OWC. This one says OWC. I'm not sure what the relation is, but this is pretty much an exact replica copy of it, okay? So it's got air ventilation holes in here on both sides, so air flows through, but like we said earlier, it is passively cooled, so which means there's no active fan blowing or moving air around it. So that actually causes a small problem because it does seem to get really, really warm during usage and almost uncomfortably warm so you cannot even touch or hold it. So if you are gonna be using this, I would definitely say put it near some kind of airflow like a vent or air purifier, desk fan, or just put a fan somewhere near so that air is moving around it, okay? Here's the RJ45 port on the front. Here's a Thunderbolt 3 port on the back, okay? And you know it's a Thunderbolt 3 port because it has a Thunderbolt or a lightning symbol, okay? So a Thunderbolt cable, most of the time, good quality Thunderbolt cable will also do USB-C and Thunderbolt, okay? A USB-C cable can only do USB-C, it cannot do Thunderbolt. So what they include in there is a very short 0.5 meter Thunderbolt 3 passive cable, okay? OWC branded, nothing too special, Thunderbolt on both sides, works great. All that also in there is like the silicone sleeve type thing, okay? And I, I get the idea around it because this is pretty metal build, right? And it's, it's, it can pretty scratch up the table if you had like a wooden desk or something like that. So I get the point of this, but I do have a little bit of issue with this mainly because, let's put it in here, okay? So if you put this adapter in here, the one good thing that it does is because of the feet that's on this silicone rubberized casing thing, it does sit maybe a millimeter or two off the ground, promoting like airflow to flow through there, right? But because it does kind of go over the metal case casing, it does restrict a little bit of airflow on the sides and the 
the channels are a little bit blocked, right? So it doesn't really flow all the way through there. It can cause some turbulence. Maybe I'm just nitpicking out a few things, but it is there. I do wish personally that they just had some feet or something installed, rubber feet or something on the bottom of install this. So it just sits like that and you don't have to put this casing around it because if you do ever use a furbine and take this casing off, you will realize that this case is incredibly warm. Okay, so make sure you keep that in mind. We just use like an AC Infinity fan or a desk fan and put a fan around it, but it does get pretty warm. So that's what it does. So we're able to use this. We've had it for a while. Like I said, we've used it to move some um, 4K video files around for stuff that we're filming on this channel and my other channel. Go check that out if you haven't checked it out already. But um, we generally connect this to a 10 gigabit ethernet network using to connect the files and storage over a NAS or a NAS network. We used to use ZFS or free NAS and stuff like that. Now we're moving more on the Synology stuff, but we did recently upgrade our Synology. So now we can do 10 gigabit ethernet off of that. So without too much further ado, let's get into some kind of testing with this. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but it does cost roughly around 150 bucks. You can get it off Amazon or OWC or Emacs sales or whatever that place is called. But um, no one's paying for this video. It's not sponsored. We can pretty much take whatever we want. But like I said, let's get into some of the testing with the computer and we'll be right back. All right, you guys, and we're back with the computer. So, so all you really got to do, like I said, if you're on a Mac, you just plug it in and you're ready to go. It'll pop up in your network settings and you can configure it or whatever you need to do with it. But like I said, we plugged it in right here, ready to go. And luckily on the back side of this one, on, unlike some Thunderbolt, um, to 10 gig ethernet adapters on the back side of this one, you know that it is powered on and plugged in because on the back side, like I said, there is a blue light that comes on. And that blue light is still there even if the cable is not plugged in, therefore letting you know that this adapter is powered on, okay? Whether it's connected or not, it's a different story. But there's light that is there that's powered on. That is convenient because like I said, on the CalDigit one, it doesn't really have that one. On the front side here, um, here's a port when you do plug it in. We actually, before we do, let's talk about the plug or talk about the cable. So in order to get 10 gigabit ethernet speech, you can get away with CAT6, okay? Um, there's also CAT6A, which is CAT6 amended a little bit. CAT6 amended in order to support more of the 10 gig uh, speeds and things like that. There's also CAT7, there's a bunch of other stuff, but I would recommend you use at minimum of a CAT6A, okay? And depending on what lengths and stuff you need to go, um, you may need to use CAT6A or even CAT7 or even fiber at certain points, but it's not a fiber adapter, okay? So like I said, use CAT6A. I, I believe it can de uh, deliver somewhere around 10, 10 gig speeds at roughly around 100. 100 meters, I think, I believe. Don't quote me on that, but I do believe off the top of my head that's, that is what I think can happen. But we're not going 100 meters with this. So, like I said, make sure you use a good quality CAT 6A cable. Um, if you can get the one that has each individual pairs shielded, definitely go with that. So, let's plug it in here. And when you plug it in, it will let you know um, by the light code or the lights that come up on here, what speed it is connected at, okay? And depending on what settings and things that you, you have, you may connect at different speeds. So like I said, if you have this one and another, like a 10 gig switch, it should connect 10 gig automatically. If it doesn't, you have may have a bad cable or something, but you can go look into your preferences and figure that out. So on this model, or at least on this, this adapter, if you connect at 10 gig, you have a green light and an orange light. If you connect at one gig, you will have two green lights which I thought was pretty interesting because usually I would expect maybe two greens is usually better or something like that. So anyways, like I said, so right here, let's see, we have a green light and a orange light, which means we are connected at 10 gig speeds. So this MacBook here is a 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro Retina. Um, and the other side, it's also connected to another 2016, I believe MacBook Pro Retina and we are going to be using a program here called iPerf. So actually before we do it, let's go in here and look at the setting here, the adapter setting. So right here I'm on a, a internal network because I mainly wanted to connect between the two and didn't have anything else in the middle. That way we can't get a good test of the adapter, not necessarily relying on any switches or anything. So if you go into hardware, I set mine manually mainly because I did want to enable jumbo frames, okay? So in case you didn't know, 
um, usually the NTU size by default is set to about 1500. In order to get maximum benefit out of this, you want to use jumbo frames um, or MTU size of 9000. What that really means, if you don't know what it really means, think of it as the best way to explain it is instead of sending a thousand little small packets that each have let's just magically make up numbers here, right? 10% overhead, right? So anytime you're getting thousands of packets with 10% overhead, instead of doing that, let's just send one big packet, right? With 10% overhead, okay? Or a little small overhead. 10 bytes of overhead, eight bytes of overhead, or whatever it may be. So the easiest way for maybe someone to make a, um, an analogy is instead of buying 50 different packages on Amazon, right? And Amazon sends you 50 different individual packages, right? They can probably just ship you in, all the packages and things that you bought in one big box, okay? That way it reduces the overhead on the CPU, CPU and, and processors and, and the embedded processors don't have to work as hard in order to do that. Therefore, it actually allows you to, at the end, to get more throughput. So, you need jumbo frames enabled. And on the key thing to note here is, you need jumbo frames enabled in the entire chain, okay? What does that mean? It means if I'm the client here, I need jumbo frames enabled on my network device, and whatever server I'm talking to needs to have jumbo frames enabled on that device or that network interface card, and whatever network I'm connecting through needs to have jumbo frames enabled. Not everything or thing may have that. If you have a switch, maybe a global setting that you need to enable jumbo frames or whatnot, but keep that in mind, because without jumbo frames being enabled, you will only get maybe somewhere between 6 to 7.9 or 6 to 8 gigabit per second link. But we'll go into and demonstrate that real quick. So, like I said right here, if we look, we are at 9,000 NTU size. We'll just go ahead and clear, nothing changed, but not hit apply. But what we will do is do a socket to socket connection. And we will do, so right now this computer is set to 1.2.3. 12 and I'm going to be connecting to 2.11 iperf really opens up socket here and, and there's a socket iperf server listening on the other side so we will do a test right now we'll see how it goes see right now we're getting roughly around 9.1 9.6 9.6 9.5 9 roughly gigabits per second okay so that's pretty close to about 10 gig all right so if you look right here transfer roughly around 11.1 .1 gigs sender receiver 9.5 all right so just to demonstrate what i was pointing out earlier the other side still has enabled so let's go back to the default of 1500 okay if i set this to 1500 and it does resync let's make sure it actually saved properly which it did 1500 and i'll run the exact same test again we'll probably get somewhere around six all right so look at that overhead that is reduced by using jumbo frames Actually, the thing I said about earlier wouldn't really make sense because that's in percentages, but let's just say in bytes, okay? But the point is that you want to use jumbo frames. So if you're if you have a 10 gig Ethernet card and you're not and you're not seeing the full or close to 10 gig, then most likely you're not using jumbo frames. So make sure you do that and you should be much better off to go. Um, so there we go. So like I said, we've been using this for a while. We've used it to transfer a lot of our 4K video files back and forth and it allows us to work a lot more quickly instead of just sitting there waiting for transfer times to happen. So this has been working out pretty well for us. We usually have like one of those uh, USB fans sitting on it because it does seem to get really, really warm and we usually use it without this because um, this usually just seems to retain heat for whatever reason. But uh, like I said, it's worked out pretty well for us. And um, this may be another video or whatnot, but if you're on, if you have a USB connected um, Ethernet device or you got a Thunderbolt to Ethernet device or whatnot, most likely you are not gonna enable, you're not gonna be able to have things like jumbo frames configured on some of those devices. Like if I go here, even if I set this to manually, see, I can't, I can't really set anything so from zero to 1500. A lot of the devices will not support jumbo frames, okay? This device, this OWC 10 gig, or Thunderbolt 3 to 10 gig Ethernet adapter will support jumbo frames. And the CalDigit one I have over there will support jumbo frames. The same OWC device I have down near the server closet will also support jumbo frames. And actually it's the same thing. So these devices do, if you're looking for a device that does support jumbo frames and works re relatively reliably, this one does work really well. The CalDigit one works really well. I'm sure there's a few other ones, but personal experience tells you these two, I can tell you, work pretty well. So, 
I hope this video has helped you guys out. Um, I mean, it's definitely helped us improve with our workflows and things like that. So, oh, like I said, hope this video helped you guys out, and we'll see you guys next time.